Hey everyone, and welcome back to another edition of the VivKB podcast, an isolation session, no doubt. But what can you say? We are so lucky to have probably the coolest guest possible for this one. Bring her back to the show, Miss Laura Lee Chapados. Laura Lee, how you doing? Hi, thank you for having me. I'm doing fabulous. So the last time we had you on, we were about one month out of the Olympia. How did you feel getting ready for that show? Did you have a good time at the Olympia last year? I did. I did have an amazing time. You know, like the Olympia, we wait for that stage the entire year. You just, you leave Vegas and you're actually excited and counting the days when you're going to go back. You know, you're like, okay, we're 365 days out from today. And um, the excitement and everything. I'm just, yeah, I really had a good time. No, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, obviously fingers crossed with everything that's going on around the world that we can even have an Olympia this year, but you've obviously kept your fans very up to date with, um, how you're going and how focused you are on the future. And, um, that's why we're doing this today. We've opened this podcast up for all of Laura Lee's fans to ask their questions for her to answer. So you excited for this? We've got some fan questions for you. Yeah, I'm super excited. I, I love those like, you know, kind of like random, not prepared, just very genuine podcast. So let's do this. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously you had an amazing uh, recent interview with Jay Cutler TV, which was uh, very, very cool to see you open up about where you are in life at the moment and what the future holds. And that's where a lot of these um, fan questions have come from, seeing that. And now I guess they want to ask these questions from that. So let's get into it. You ready? The first one's quite a simple one. How are you finding isolation? Ooh, um, isolation. I, it, it went like through phases, right? So at first I was like, that can happen. And then slowly you start seeing like things happen, you know, and eventually your gym gets closed and now your routine is all kind of messed up because that's basically, you know, what I do is just go to the gym and train. Um, so at first transitioning from working out in the gym and being in my environment, which I've done for like five years now, every single day was very kind of upsetting I would like trying to work out and trying to set up my stuff and just be like frustrated about it and just like this can be like this can be it like I'm prepping like this is too much but it's just again the mindset you know you switch it this is what is happening right now it's everybody's in the same boat so you just you have a job to do you have to get ready for at the time Pittsburgh Pro and New York Pro I was like six weeks out from Pittsburgh and then, um, and then eight weeks out from New York when everything happened. So I was just like in the full like groove, but it kind of like, it's kind of a speed bump. Yeah, totally. The best tip that I have to tell you out there is just, you know, you create the same environment, same kind of routine that you already have. When you go to the gym, the machines are ready for you. Set your home, set your living room, just, as it's a, it's a gym put your favorite music on for me like headphones over everything and then i'm just ready to work out i don't look into my phone you put there's this magnificent feature of sleep mode put it on sleep mode as long as you work out you get through your workout and then you're done for the day so i would say you seem to got isolation sorted um the next question we have almost goes alongside that is have your motivation levels changed since being in isolation or are you still focused on those shows come end of year? So the, the dates have changed, right? Um, for the show. So the full, like my full calendar is kind of off right now because my plan was to do a show in May. And there's a reason why I wanted to do a show in May is to get them rest enough before the Olympia. Um, considering the fact that I'm qualified right now for um, 2020 Olympia I won't I probably I don't plan on doing any shows that close to the Olympia because I've noticed if you do one show right after the other for me there's one of these shows I won't be 100% my buddy is very tricky where 
the line between being too full or being flat and lean is very, very close to one another. And I can't risk something like that as a show as a show as big as, as the Olympia. Absolutely. You want to peak for the biggest show of the year and bring your best package to stage. That's very fair. Because you asked me the question of, you know, being motivated. I don't base my goal on like motivation. It's just, it's something that I do, you know, like it's, motivation goes on and off for everybody. Sometimes you, some days you feel unmotivated. Sometimes you feel motivated, but the, the game is to take action. Absolutely. As long as you take action every day, you just don't think about it. Don't be emotional about, about it because then you make excuses. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, but the shows are postponed. No, but still like I, I'm in this mindset right now. Like I'm following a diet in up season. And if people know me, they're like, are you sure you're okay? Like, are you still yourself out there? Because I'm the one who's like a foodie who like loves to eat every time. So for me to hold up to like myself accountable at the moment, like still tracking the food that I eat, it's a big thing for me, but I'm like, I mean that I think that motivates me in some kind of way, but don't rely on motivation because it's, it's never steady. Like even as pros or amateur, like it, there's no, like motivation does it, it's not different for any human being, you know, if it's not because I'm a pro that I'm always like super hyped, like and motivated and like, let's go to the gym. No, I just, I know I have to go to the gym because that's going to bring my physique where I want it to be in the long run. Absolutely. And I guess what you're saying is if you've got that goal and you've set that goal, no matter what, you have to get there. If that's the goal that you've set, regardless of what's going on at the time, you have to still work towards that um, and finish that journey, more to say. Exactly. I see it, you know, like I'm, I'm reading this, uh, this book about investing, which has nothing to do with fitness, but it's just funny because he was talking about, um, you know, using a stock, for example, like the plane as transportation for one point to another, which is like, your point right now to like a goal in the future and it's the same with fitness you know you don't get attached to the plane you don't get attached to like the, don't get emotional about the food like about the training just do what you gotta do like if you have to take a plane to go to la to australia you're getting in the plane but you're not like getting emotional about the plane you know what i'm saying like yeah, you don't want to like care about the plane and everything so same thing with fitness like i have a goal of being my best in september 2020 well all the food that i put in my body is like fuel and the workout is just fuel that i do to go to that point to bring me to that point if that makes sense oh absolutely and i think it's um something that your fans even myself who, who is a fan as well um, can really admire about you is that level of focus, that level of dedication. And you can even see it in the posts that you write on Instagram. There's always some form of, um, I guess that's why they call you the dark horse. You almost approach it like you've got this chip on your shoulder that you want to get this right, that you want to get to that end goal and really be the best version of yourself. And you're not almost looking to prove people wrong, but prove yourself right. I like that. Prove myself right. Exactly. I think like you have to bet on yourself every day. It's so important. But, no, absolutely. But yeah, I get what you're saying. I'm like, I'm very serious about my sports. And like people are like, are you sh like, are you okay? I'm just like, you know what? I'm good. Like, this is what I want to do. Like, I'm in my happiest place. When I go to the gym, I'm at peace, but I'm focused. Like, people are just like, I wanted to say hello, but, you know, I really didn't want to bother. I'm like, it's just, it's just me, you know? Like, I go completely, like, zoned. You got game face on and it's game time. I completely get that. Someone's asked, when things feel tough, how do you overcome them? I think when life hits you, you don't really realize how bad it is until you think about it later. Because there's a way that you manage going through things depending on what you're going through. But, um, you know, like, reflecting on the uh, situation that I was in in 2018 right now I'm just like how did I even get on stage how did I even won shows like how did I even get there to where I was um because I I was in it I was like it's not that bad but I was pulling myself together there was like 
I remember like for the Olympia, I was crying at the gym every day because I, ha I was in such misery in my life. Like everything was just going sideways and wrong, but I had that to hold on to. And it's just, again, there, th this sport changed my, my whole, like it made me who I am today, like as the person that I am today, because it, it hold me. It really like, it was the thing that pulled me like through the water. So it's just, I think something that you have to remind yourself, like who you are, what do you want in life and make sure that you really want it. Like, you know, like, every time that people ask me, like, tell me, tell one thing, to the person who wants to compete, do it for yourself. Make sure you do it for yourself because your battles are going to be yours, your life, your environment. It's not, it's not a fair sport because we're not in the same like it's not me you know it's not we're not all in the same environment we're not dealing with the same environment the same struggle the same challenges the same whatever it is and it's different actually for each and every prep but as long as you do it for yourself it's gonna it gives you the purpose and the light is like right in front of you all the time even though like there's some shadows and rain and everything you just know that behind all this there's a light i don't know no, absolutely. Um, one thing I will quickly say to anyone that hasn't seen it yet, um, check out Laura Lee's interview with Jay Cutler TV, where she did talk about those, um, those past moments that really shaped her. And that will probably give a bit more clarity towards her last answer, which I think is absolutely amazing and very motivating for anyone out there that is going through any form of struggle to know that even the best athletes in the world have gone through these things and have come through them. What we have here is I found a very interesting question. I'm very curious to know your answer. Is there a particular competitor that you've set your mind on saying, I want to beat that person? I don't like, so there, there was a point in my competition career that happened. And I, I, I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm going to say a name. Is it, Maybe maybe it, it's good to tell me. You know what? I'm going to say the name. So I was chasing Janet at one point. You know why? She was beating me in the Philippines, and she had a physique that, you know, like, um, we were kind of battling against. I don't know. Like, you know, you know around the Arnold, the hype against, like, me and Janet, Janet that, that was kind of happening. Yeah. 2019, so I, right? 2019, exactly. Yeah. So with the coach that I had in the time, that was kind of our kind of our gauge point because I, I've just lost I've lost to Janet in the Philippines a week after winning in Stanium against her. So I was like, this is the physique that I have to aim for. This is the bikini standard. So I chased that. And it didn't happen like to be very good for me because I finished sixth at the Arnold, which was my worst pacing ever. But what it teaches it teach me is that bikini, there's no, like you can say like broad shoulders, small waist and glutes, which is true, which is all true. But if you look at all of us, Angelica, me, Isa, um, Janet, we have all different, um, physique, but we, br we we are bringing our own best self that suits our physique. So for me, for example, the feedback that I always get is that to bring the 2018 Olympia look. But if you see some pictures in 2018, there's some pictures. Yes, I'm full, but I'm I hold body fat a lot more than any of these girls. Mm. More than Isa, more than Angelica, and more than Janet probably combined. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not shredded. I'm not lean. I, I'm just, I have this look that they love on me, which is more bubbly, I guess. And it can be very tricky for a coach, if it's not me, to be like, oh, is that going to be enough? Yeah. But for me, it is enough. Because as I said, like the line between be, me being too lean, too shredded or flat or just right, the right fullness is very, very um, 
very very like short like that that was it like it was the uh, one time me chasing janet other than that right now i'm just like fully focused on being my best version of myself totally and um that that was the point i was going to make is obviously with the sport being subjective it really is a case of just bringing the best version of you to the stage because like you said when the physiques are so different you can't go for the same uh style as another competitor if that doesn't suit your body type you know you have to try and bring in a package that best suits your physique your structure your level of conditioning and um i think that's what makes the sport so interesting is the subjective nature of it is you know your physiques can be so different and it's just so hard to judge but um that also makes it very cool doesn't it i think so for me i think so it's it's been an eye-opener for a lot of competitor to kind of watch what was what's happening with my situation because i don't i don't think people realize how different it is it's not about the, being the leanest the most muscular or it's just really being you and that's why a posing suit that suits you is the most important even though you if you wear purple like all of us maybe it's not gonna suit you, you know? like you really have to own your style and your personality and hats off to the judges because honestly, like all the girls right now, like the 30 or 25 girls that goes in the Olympia could all be champions, you know? Absolutely. And similar to what you said earlier about not doing so many shows around Olympia time is you could look amazing um, a week out, a day out or whatever it happens to be, but you have to look on point for that day at that time, you know? And it, that, that's the hardest part about peaking for a contest is, a week before you might have had a better physique than you know whoever it happened to be it just happened to be on that day something might have happened you didn't get your peak right didn't get your water right whatever it is so that also makes it very difficult doesn't it yeah so many variables you know like 2020 olympia i was ready nine weeks out from the show i could have walked on stage on a wednesday morning on that wednesday morning when you know james told me like okay you're ready right there and 12 days before the Olympia, I hurt my back real bad, injured my back, my lower back, couldn't move, couldn't pose. And in the matter of like two days, my physique went from looking on point to being like absolutely so bad. So it was just like catching up. But then oh. you get stressed and nervous. So um, I haven't been on stage my 100% since 2018. I do believe that. But, you know, um, that certainly excites everyone to know that, you know, obviously hearing that story that you weren't able to bring your best. I'll tell you what, when you bring your best, it's going to be a very special day, no doubt. Very now, the next question, um, I'm so curious about this one. I kind of like it. Do you have any other competitor that you believe beefs with you on social media or backstage? That beef? Yeah, that like um, talks a bit of trash about you. I hope not. <laughs> I don't know if I live, like am naive or anything, but um, I don't. I don't think so. Hopefully do, not. Do all the girls get along backstage? We don't really have beef backstage. We have a pretty good time as you know, like professional like everybody have their own kind of like routine backstage i get very silent because i'm just an introvert by heart but we always manage to get have some fun you know yeah that's good so th th there's no one in particular that you don't like backstage and you go i'm gonna get you today i'm gonna beat your ass today no you have no time for that you just have there's you know there's so much happening that the only thing you can focus on is really yourself. Totally. Yeah. Well, this is a really cool question. Um, what do you find to be the hardest thing about being a pro athlete? Ooh, so many things, but like traveling is like the most amazing thing. Traveling because like I'm from Canada, Quebec, like a small city where like nobody tells you that you can actually, like, nobody can believe that you can actually be something or someone in your life ever. They're like very close-minded in my opinion. 
So once you get to see all that and go to Asia and like Australia and then meet people that actually come to you and tell you like, you inspire me so much. I love you. You're like, you love me for what I do. That's amazing. And I feel that only like, that's really what matters when you become a professional is that kind of, um, that kind of title that you are able to use to, um, like people notorious, how do you say, how do you say that? Notorious. I don't like, know. Like people I, like, they, they hold know, like your, your, credibility, your, your credibility is more notarized, you know, notarized. Cool notarized yeah so it's, people can actually relate to you and you're able to use you and what you love to get some more love so it's like a cool like love bubble from totally. you just doing what you love to do which is absolutely amazing and all all of that around the world now which is absolutely nuts. like you would think me going for the first time in australia last year i don't expect anyone to come at me and tell me like Laura, I love you. I want a picture with you, but it actually happened. And every time it's just shock. It's shock. Like, I don't know. I, I get shock all the time. And I asked Sean, like, Sean is the same thing. Same thing. He's still like, after all these years, we would like walk in a supermarket market and he, like people would go like, hey, Sean, Flexitron. And he'd, he'd be like all shock. Like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> but it's a reality, which is like, crazy but fun no that's uh you both two humble human beings and it's a uh, a great thing to see you both succeed um in the industry that you both love is there anything you don't enjoy about being a pro athlete don't enjoy no i love what i do <laughs> well that's good that's a good thing then now we just spoke about obviously all these people coming to you and saying how much they idolize you, how much you influence them. Who do you look up to? Oh, you know, I look up to all the champions. Um, I'm talking Jay Cutler. I'm talking about Flex Lewis. I'm talking about Oksana Krishna. I'm talking about uh, Sydney. I'm talking about Candice. I'm talking about Angelica. You know, all these amazing champions that hold themselves and make the sport so great. I look at them because I'm like, I'm going to have some big shoes to fill. And I just want to fill it as, as well as they're doing right now or more or better my way, you know? Absolutely. But, um, as a bikini competitor, Angelica has to be, she's one of my dear friends. And I just, I really believe in how genuinely she loves this sport. That's why I relate to her so much. And yeah. How do you find that being a part of, obviously with Gat Sport, being a part of the same team as Angelica, getting to travel with her. Um, have you found that bond through that? Has that made that relationship stronger? It did get stronger, but it, it goes beyond that, you know, like me and Angelica, I mean, in 2018, you're like, who's that girl? And we're like in the same call out, like two, two of us just battling together. I think that really like just sparkled something between, between her and I, and it just got, went back and forth since then. And um, of course, every time that we have to get together, in some type of way, it just gets stronger, that bond. Oh, absolutely. But I, I think any anybody who met Angelica could say the same thing. She's just an awesome person. Her and Marco, so. Yeah, I, I love, she just has so much time for everyone. And uh, that that's definitely something as fans, we appreciate so much is getting to meet athletes of your caliber. And when you guys have such genuine time for everyone that's so kind to you, you know, it makes, us be able to go home and just feel good about ourselves and want to pursue our own goals, seeing you the way you are. So that's definitely something special. And I, I think people underestimate how motivating for us it is 
to go back home. We every time we go to events, like it it gets so overwhelmed. Like not overwhelmed, it's not the right word, but like all the love that we're getting, we're just going to we're just carrying that all the way through preps. You know, you're telling me like tough times. I'm just if I get through tough times, I just I can't remember the day that the the time that I went to Mexico. Sorry, and I was like overwhelmed with all this kind of love and i'm just like this is my why this is my my people you know like i'm i'm sure there's someone out there that get inspired by the workout that i post today and i'm just gonna sit and just cry on myself no i'm gonna lift myself up because sophie over there is inspired by what i do so i better keep going for her at least you know so i think people underestimate you know, the, the exchange of motivation is really there. It's not only a one way. It's not only you guys to us, the opposite, me to, to them, but like it's, it's a two ways. No, I absolutely. I totally get that. And um, like I said, this is why it's so cool to sit down and talk to you and you explain that back to your fans that you do care, you do take those messages in and that's what helps you become the athlete that you are. Now, we have an awesome question here. What's your retirement plan after you've done competing? I just turned 24. That hurts <laughs> my heart. Um, well, that's a very good and interesting question. Because as I said, I just turned 24. But, um, you know, like I have this plan. I don't make a time or due date for my dreams so there's things i want to accomplish before i retired or even think about retirement and there's so many of it that i want to accomplish but i mean i want to travel i mean i don't even have an idea where i want to live really like do i want to i want i kind of want to get some cooking class going on like do i want to you know have a thing with my brothers like they're in finance and yeah would go like in finance like the world is so open and i feel like the world is just like opening more and more so for me to just make a statement today about something in the future is just closing my mind of opportunities and i don't want to do that so i'm just keeping like my mind wide um, wide open well let's be honest at 24 years old you've got about 30 years until you need to retire anyways so We'll, we'll ask this question about 30 years from now. Good. Um, it was actually the, the third question I had from a fan that we'll obviously come back to now, which is, um, do you have a morning ritual? Is there something you do every single day without failure? My apple cider vinegar and my L-carnitine. That's a daily. That's a daily and it become a daily and I don't even know how I'm still doing it. It's just, I honestly, I'm telling you, I wake up in the morning and I crave it. I'm like, I want it right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's been like, I mean, I, it's been my fourth bottle since I'm here of l carnitine and my like third bottle of apple cider vinegar. And I love it. I was going to say, thank God for that amazing Gatsport l carnitine They've got amazing flavors in that, don't they? I know, I know they're so good, but my favorite are lemon and rim, uh, rainbow burst and lemon. So I uh, alternate between one another. I always like to start, you know, with liquid, like some kind of like hydration before eating. Otherwise I go through my meals like this and I get so hungry during the day. And especially right after breakfast, I wake up so hungry. If I go right away to food, it's going to be gone in two seconds and then I'm going to be like, what am I going to do with my life? So I'd rather wake up. This allows me to like stay hydrated every time I just like drink my, my whole thing. And then I start making my breakfast and then I feel that it takes the process of eating is slower. So I eat later. So then I can eat more often closer. That way we don't go to bed hungry and we start snacking. I get that completely. The next one we have for you is do you prefer Sean with hair or without hair? Oh, did someone ask that for real? Someone's asked that for real. Yeah, I thought it was you. Um, 
I am the one. I'm the one who's cheering for the hair right now. Oh, so that's why he's kept it now. This is this is you. You're the reason. <laughs> yeah, I was like, embrace those hair. You have so much hair. Like I, I wanted like a little afro. I wanted to be like a legit afro. Did, that's did the goal right there. Did he um? Did he ever have an afro when he was growing up or? Well, he did. I can't remember the year he went on stage with an actual, like, actually hair. And people were like, is it your real hair? 2017, was it? I think 2017? I think so. Y- I year before I he won. Or I don't know. Maybe, oh, maybe 2017. You're right. Yeah, I think it was the year but, before. Um, yeah, I'm cheering. I'm all the way for hair right now. That's awesome. Actually, we've got one more Sean question here. And um, just so you know, it's not me. This is from Ray from Melbourne, Victoria in Australia here. He's asked, does Sean play any video games at all? I mean, not right now. We don't have anything like set up for video games. We're trying to get a little bit um, proactive on some (laughs) other stuff. But uh, when he came to Montreal, we've been to this like place and he played rock band like a pro. Like I was just like, not rock band, guitar hero. Guitar hero, yeah. I was just like, that looks really easy. And then I started doing it. And I'm just like, oh my God, you're actually so good. <laughs> so Do you play video games at all? I don't. I'm so boring, you guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's okay. We've been, like, we've been watching Ozark, Money Highs. We've even played uh, like Uno and like Yassi. That's where we're at right now. Well, I was going to say, that's actually the next question here is what is your favorite TV show? Oh, I just, we watched Ozark in like three days. How many like, seasons did that have? Three seasons of, I don't know, like 10 episodes or something. So you just got that all done in a couple of days. Yeah, that's what we do. We just <laughs> <laughs> So that was, that's my favorite show. And it was um, suggested by, from Angelica. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we, um, we know you're a big foodie and you love to cook. I was, we, the next question we actually do have is regarding cooking. What is your favorite thing to cook? Everything cookable. <laughs> <laughs> is that a good answer? I mean, it's, it's a fair answer. That's my uh, answer. That, that. <laughs> no, but seriously, I think my best and favorite thing to cook, like as a meal or just, I, I love to cook breakfast food. Like that would be my favorite, like some kind of like brunch food. But I love cooking meat. Yeah. Also. Would you ever want to go on a show like MasterChef or Hell's Kitchen or anything like that? I'm going to need to work on my skills before going that because I'm the one I'm watching is MasterChef Australia and the people that are doing it, they're real chefs. Like they have some really, really mad skills. So, I mean, it might be something in the future. We'll see But um, right now I'm really just an amateur, just trying some stuff out. Well, I think um, all your Instagram followers definitely appreciate all the, the step-by-step procedures of your meals going online. And who knows, one day, Laura Lee, Master Chef, let's make it happen. Now, <laughs> this question here is um, one that a close friend of mine asked, and I thought this was a really cool one. This is going back to a comp question. What has been your favorite moment on stage ever? Oh, my gosh. I think... I think I'm going to have to say me and Angelica. Just because the way that I felt at the moment, I just, I went, I was like completely blacked out at the Olympia stage until they called my name and Angelica. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm just, I can't, I can't even imagine how it looks like. Like, you know, sometimes you're like on stage and you're kind of imagining like, you know, like, you know that like, this person, that person, they're all over there. So you're like right there. And that, that's kind of like the image of how it looks. But imagine me beside Angelica and like bowling it out. 
at my first Olympia, weirdest thing ever. And I just, I, I was like completely out of the blackout and I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm at the Olympia. This is Angelica. This is the reigning champion. I'm battling. I'm Laura Lee. Who am I? Like, it was just, what's going on? So I think that was my favorite because that was the most unstable place, like unstable moment. I was on stage. I was just like. Right. And you know what's, um, I think, very important to mention about that is you're a, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're a five-time uh, pro champion, correct? Right. So you've had moments where you've won shows, but you can even say that a moment like that where you came away as runner up was so, so special. And I think that's so important for people to remember when they are competing is not to fixate so much on the, on the place or the result, but just being in that moment and enjoying that moment. The, the moment that you realize that you're winning every day, you're winning every time you kill a workout, you, you're winning every time that you, nail your diet the the winning actual trophy is just you know that like icing on the cake but you just ate the old cake before like the cake has been eating every day you know so like having the trophy in your hands that's why like i don't i don't look at my trophies anymore you know they're here they're there they're in my heart in my soul in my mind that i carry with me every day to the gym still but it's not there's so much more than that like you guys are all winners the moment that you decide that on day that day you're putting your suit on you have your coat of tan on and you're stepping on stage in front of the those judges you just won right there absolutely well before all those other questions i've asked today uh all from your amazing fans they've all asked those questions on instagram now, if it's okay with you, can I ask one question? <coughs> no. Okay. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay. Because this is probably a question that I really, really want to know the answer to. Laura Lee, are you going to win the 2020 Miss Bikini Olympia contest? I would really like to believe so. I I think I'm going to explain to you why. Because I'm ready. I'm ready spiritually. I'm ready, I believe, you know, working physically towards that every day. Um, I feel ready physically. I feel ready spiritually. I feel ready mentally. All these parts of my life, if I can keep on that track, I do believe I can be 20, your 2020 Miss Olympia. Um, if it means anything at all, I personally believe that that's very true. And there is a very, very good chance that this will happen at well, 24 years of age. Who knows what a moment that'll be. Yeah, it would be awesome. No. Um, honestly, Laura Lee, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Obviously, there's so much... Uh, chaos in the world but something like this gives so many amazing people out there some great things and great moments and great stories and I, I know speaking on behalf of everyone thank you so much for answering all these questions and taking your time to do that we wish you nothing but the best for 2020 and we've all got our fingers crossed right here for the dark horse to come out this year the 2020 Miss Bikini Olympia champion I love you guys so much you know it's it's a pleasure for me to come here. Hopefully we can do one before the 2020 Olympia before, like, you know, when all of this is over, um, just love doing this stuff with you. You're so much fun. And I just want to say thank you. Everyone's going to watch this and make sure that you feel free to come into my DMs and we can chat about what's going on in the world or yeah, your motivation or bikini stuff or non-bikini stuff, food stuff, whatever you want. I'm always so open and I'm always appreciating the love and the support. Uh, we, I'm doing this for you guys. Like, you're my why, I have my purpose and we're gonna get this together. We're, getting, we're all in this together. So all my love. Thank you once again. And thank you everyone for viewing this podcast. We can't wait to once again have Laura Lee on hopefully a bit closer to the Olympia. So 
Thank you again, Laura. You take care, take care of yourself, stay healthy. And to everyone else, stay healthy, stay safe. And we look forward to the next one.